shoot your arrows. Cooper Cup walks it out of the air and gives the Rams the lead. Robert Wood, touchdown, LA. Goff goes crashing into the end zone. Aaron Donald almost beat the football there. Corey Littleton, have yourself a day. Picked off, Marcus Peters. Coming off the edge, and Ryan will be wrapped up by Clay Matthews. Everett in stride. Wow. Franklin Myers gets his hand down there. Little got a hand on it. Did he pick it? He did! Racing down the sideline is a key to lead. Gurley for MVP! Touchdown LA! Picked off by John Johnson. Well, Dante Fowler, who is able to get to breathe. Greg Zerline sends the Ram to the Super Bowl! Party. Welcome back, guys, to another Downtown Rams podcast. It's episode 277. I'm your host, Jake Ellenbogen. Joining me, as always, is Alexis Kraft, and this is the Draft Season Podcast Edition. We have two interviews today, fun interviews, both on the offensive side of the ball. First and foremost, we have Stanford tight end Colby Parkinson, and we have Virginia quarterback Bryce Perkins. We really enjoyed talking with them. Hope you guys enjoy the interview. Um, before we get into it, if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your podcasts. And lastly, enjoy the show. All right, guys, joining us on the podcast, we have Stanford tight end Colby Parkinson. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. It's going great, guys. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, of course. We're excited to talk to you. And just to start this off, we just want to hear a little bit about how you got into the game of football. Yeah, so I've been playing football since uh, I can remember. Um, I picked it up because my brother started playing. I was about six at the time, I want to say. I was either kindergarten or first grade uh, playing little peewee tackle football. And uh, I haven't haven't stopped since. Um, Loved the game ever since I was a kid and kind of have that passion in me um, ever since then. Yeah, of course, man. And kind of growing up, did you have, uh, you know, a player that you looked up to, maybe, uh, you know, modeled your game after? So growing up, um, my mom's from the San Diego area, and uh, her brothers are huge Chargers fans. So at that time, it was Antonio Gates and LaDainian Tomlinson, Phil Rivers, um, all those guys. So I, I really looked up to uh, Antonio Gates a lot, watched him play um, a good amount. Um, so he was someone that I was – I was watching since I was, I mean, seven, eight years old when I first started watching football on the TV. Yeah. And, uh, you know, when it came time for you to uh, play in college, you end up going to Stanford. What was the main factor for you in choosing to go there? Yeah. So Stanford is an amazing place. I absolutely love it. And uh, I had always wanted to go there. My uh, my dad, when I was, when I was probably in middle school, I want to say, my dad asked me what college I wanted to go to just have a conversation nothing really no point to it um and i said stanford and he he convinced me enough and motivated me enough that i have to get it done in the classroom as well and um that academic drive kind of pushed me to want to go to a place like that and um really pursue the other side of um the school as well and not just being a football player but also being a student and then um obviously the the great success that they had in years past um, before i got there watching great tight ends like Zach Ertz, Austin Hooper, um, Levine Torlolo, Kobe Flaner, the list goes on. Um, really inspired me to want to, want to be one of the next uh, great tight ends to go through the program. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, it, like you said, there's so many greats to go through that program. And, and I think, you know, obviously when you're a tight end, you know, you're looking at either Stanford or Iowa or Notre Dame. Um, I'm sure I'm missing one, but, right. you know, those are pretty much the schools there. Uh, so, uh, you know, yeah. obviously I think that makes a lot of sense for you. Um, what would you say, if you have one, a favorite memory, a play, or, or even a game that really stands out to you, uh, you know, from your time in college? Absolutely. I mean, it's got to be the uh, the Oregon game last year. Uh, it was college game day. We were up uh, in Austin Stadium um, playing a, a really good Oregon team, and we were getting destroyed in the first half, um, came back in the second half strong, and uh, were somehow by just a miracle um, able to tie the game up at the end, uh, going to overtime, and I was uh, lucky enough to be the guy who was uh, who the ball was thrown to in overtime and, and catch the game-winning touchdown. But 
Um, it really, even if I hadn't caught the touchdown, that would have been my favorite favorite game. Just the environment and being able to win um, in such a hostile place, and uh, it was a feeling I can't really explain because everyone knew um, what was happening, but no one really said what was happening, right? Because everything just started clicking all of a sudden. Joey Alfieri had this 98-yard touchdown return, fumble uh, return, and then uh, a sophomore walk-on comes up and makes a big uh, play to force a fumble at the end, and then we go down and kick a field goal. I mean, the stars were just aligning, and it was it was a great experience. Yeah, it definitely sounds like it. And, you know, you played with a lot of really, really talented guys in college, but you also went up against a lot of really, really talented guys. Is there any one guy or maybe two guys that stand out to you as being the toughest people you had to face in college? Yeah, so this might be uh, kind of cheating, uh, but my the, I think the hardest two people I've gone against were Stanford players. Uh, my freshman year was Justin Reed. Um, going against him uh, in one-on-ones every single day really made me a better player. Um, he's he's doing great things right now for the Texans, um, and it was just a, it was an awesome way to push myself to compete. Um, learning from him, uh, watching the way he practiced, uh, it was it was great. And then uh, another guy, uh, Paulson Nadivo. I mean, he he's still at Stanford and uh, one of the <clears throat> best corners in the country and having people like that to go against every day and not just one game uh, really pushes you to be a better player, a better person. And, and it, and it creates great, great bonds in the brotherhood for sure. Yeah. And, and Colby, you know, you're the first Stanford player that I've spoken with, um, you know, this draft process so far, I, I really want to get your, your thoughts on uh, KJ Costello, um, who is going to be transferring a yep. uh, quarterback that obviously you're very familiar right. with. Um, but he's somebody, you know, I was just actually in Mobile, Alabama for the Reese's Senior Bowl, and I got to tell you, he's got some buzz. There are a lot of people I could just hear yeah. talking about him in the stands. Uh, he's got a future at the next level, but what was it like to play uh, with KJ, and, and what do you feel he brings to the table at the next level? I mean, he is, he is one of the best, if not the best, leaders I've ever uh, been lucky enough to play with. He brings more fire and passion to the game uh, than you can even imagine. He is so intense and locked in and um, just loves the game um, and is excited about any new uh, venture that the game will take him with. And I'm, uh, I'm bummed he won't be at Stanford anymore, but I know he'll, uh, he'll go on and do great things wherever he's at. I know he took a visit uh, this past week, I think to Mississippi state. And now there's rumors he's that visiting Washington and whatever program's lucky enough to get him, they'll get a great competitor and someone that um, is truly, truly one of the top quarterback talents in the country. Yeah, totally. And, you know, just in your opinion, what would you say is your biggest strength as a player? Uh, yeah, my biggest strength, I think, is uh, currently my routes, uh, my routes and my uh, my hands. I'm uh, I'm a big guy, six foot seven, and able to use that pretty well. Um, but at the same token, there's a lot I can get better at um, in that area as well. I think I can crisp up my routes and um, come down with some more uh, catches in traffic. But I think overall I've done a really good job of that um, and definitely looking to, to grow that part of my game as well, though. Yeah, of course. And, and you know, obviously we look at your strength, but um, is there, you know, a certain thing, you know, in your game where you're looking to improve on as, you know, we enter uh, the NFL uh, draft? So this past year, the biggest thing, or this past two years, the biggest thing I was working on is my blocking. Um, and I think I, I've done a, a really good job and made some big, big gains, but there's a, a bunch of room to, to continue to grow. And especially as the competition will get a lot better going into the pros, uh, being able to handle myself with the line of scrimmage uh, will be something that will be important to, for me to uh, to get better at. And um, I'm up for the task and I'm excited to be able to, to work with some great coaches and uh, fellow players to help myself do that. Yeah, and uh, this is just kind of a fun question we like to ask, but if you had to pick one quarterback to catch a touchdown pass from in the NFL, who would that be? One quarterback? I mean, I think you have to say Tom Brady, right? I think it would be, uh, be unbelievable to be able to play for the Patriots and uh, and uh, catch a touchdown from such a legendary guy as himself. Yeah, that's definitely not somebody we normally get on 
<laughs> I can't even just keep a straight face <laughs> on that. Um, yeah, he's he's normally the one that we do get. Um, but you know, it's a, it's definitely yeah. a good answer. Um, I do have to. We are a Rams podcast, so of course I'm going to ask you. Yeah. It's early in the draft process, but I have to ask if you've met or spoken with the LA Rams yet. Uh, I've not. Um, I've not uh, done any of that stuff since I'm a junior. I haven't gone to any senior bowls or whatnot, so I'm sure that will that will come uh, with the combine coming up at the end of February. Yeah, totally. You know, we we believe you're going to get you know interest from from all 32 teams, and we look forward to seeing what you do and, and seeing uh, you know your journey. But just in closing, um, in your own words, who is Colby Parkinson as a player, and who is he as a person? Um, as a as a player, I'm someone that'll give you a hundred percent all the time. Um, I'm someone that'll put in the extra work, come in, show up on time, and and do my part to help the team succeed. Uh, not a selfish guy. I just want want to see what's best for the team um, and try to win as many games as possible. Um, and then as a as a person, I'm first and foremost uh, a son of God, someone that uh, really holds that close to my heart and and tries to live a life following um, following the example of Jesus. So um, that's really what's important to me. And then after that, just someone that uh, tries to be kind and, you know, be as, as good of a person as they possibly can. Yeah, that you know, that's definitely a great answer. Um, always love, uh, you know, Alexis always asks people that. And it's always a question where, you know, makes you kind of go like, oh, <laughs> like, you know, we always get, like, <laughs> you know, kind of like a stop or like a pause where it's like, wow, I, you know, I never really been asked that before. Uh, but Hey, you know, Colby, we really appreciate you coming on. Uh, it's awesome getting to know a little bit more about you. Um, you know, glad I was able to ask you about KJ. Cause again, he's somebody that, you know, is generating a lot of buzz and I'm really excited to see yeah. you and I'm sure Alexis is as well, uh, go through this process. Um, cause you know, it's, it's definitely going to be, uh, grinding, but you know, the, the payoff is, uh, yeah. you know, quite honestly priceless at the end of the road. Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, guys. I really appreciate you having me on. Yeah, of course. Thank you so much. All right. Have a good one. You too. Take care. All right, guys. Joining us on the podcast, we have Virginia quarterback Bryce Perkins. How's it going, man? Thanks so much for coming on. Man, thank you so much for having me on. Yeah, of course. We're excited to talk to you. And just to start this off, we want to hear a little bit about how you got into the game of football. Oh, man. Oh, okay. Um, well, uh, growing up, I mean, I, I didn't like football as much as I liked basketball. I was a big basketball guy um, growing up. And then um, really got into it. My brother was playing and, and just me kind of just playing on the playground and playing a part. Um, that's kind of how I just, you know, got into it. I realized I, I was faster than most and, you know, I was really good at it. So after um, a couple of years of, you know, watching my brother play, um, I decided to go out and try for football. And after that, you know, it just kind of accelerated and my love and passion and my hard work and dedication from there on has just been um, stacking success, you know, year after year, try to be a better player. And um, definitely helps that I have, too. Um, my brother and my father, both one play, the one that's still playing, um, kind of just be that role model and kind of be that that, uh, uh, that guidance, you know, when I was first starting and even now. They still guide me and they still um, – I'm still learning things from them every day. So um, it's, it's great that I, um, that I was able to – kind of follow, you know, after their footsteps and, you know, and my mom also being there supporting me um, and kind of pushing me forward to do, you know, things that, you know, I, I was either, you know, hesitant about or didn't think I could do. So, um, you know, my love for football comes from them. Yeah, no, that that is awesome. Um, you know, you have a really cool background there. Love the bloodline connection to the NFL. Um I just got to ask, what, who was your favorite player uh, growing up, aside from, you know, your uh, your father? Oh, man. Um, I was a big – I was a big Michael Vick fan. Um, I actually had a, I had a poster of him when he was with the Falcons. 
Um, but I, I was I was a, I was a huge Chargers fan growing up, and LT, uh, the, the Danian Tomlinson, he was was my like my idol growing up, and and this is why I played running back back in like seventh seventh grade, sixth grade. So you know I always listened to him, and he was always one of my favorite players, and and just always wanted to you know be like him you know growing up. So that was definitely my favorite player growing up. Yeah, and how surreal is it for you to now have the opportunity to play in the NFL just like your father and, and your brother and your uncle did? Oh, I mean, it's very surreal. Um, you know, um, drafts is about a few months away, and um, I mean, you know, I'm looking forward to everything and playing in the NFL, but not just playing, but um, you know, dominating and 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 thriving in the NFL, not just to be there, but also to to be effective and get my shot to be, you know, a franchise QB someday. Yeah, without a doubt. Um, You know, I think the bloodline is is not only really cool, but I think it does help in the NFL. Um, It's not really about who you know, it's about who knows you and, and obviously the talent that you bring and, you know, you've made uh your your name is out there. You know, your, that last name has been in the NFL teams will be on the lookout. Um, I, I just got to ask, though, because you started off um, not at Virginia. You actually transferred to Virginia. What made you choose Virginia to uh, to go to school at? Um, after I left Arizona State, I went to junior college. And then right about October, you know, teams started reaching out, and Virginia was one of those teams. And just looking at all the teams and, and kind of their situation at quarterback, as far as you know, the the next school I was going to choose and my next steps, of Virginia had best situation as far as you know. There was a guy that was leaving, and there wasn't you know a a, a guy that was seen to be up next. And the way that the coaches were talking to me about the the offense to change and the offense identity that, that they were looking for kind of fit exactly into you know my skill set. And things I, you know, I was able to do. So, you know, choosing them wasn't as hard as 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 choosing ASU out of high school because I kind of knew exactly what I was looking for, and it, can, it kind of just worked out perfect and a perfect fit for, fit for each other. So, you know, it, it was it was definitely an easier choice and, and and the right choice I think I made. Yeah, totally. And, you know, there might be a couple different um, answers to this question, but do you have a favorite memory or a favorite play uh, or favorite game from your time playing college football? Oh, man, I mean, it, it, it's definitely when we beat Virginia Tech and it snapped that 15-game uh, losing streak. Uh, that was that was definitely the, the highlight. And to go out the way we did, beating them at home after losing a, overtime at their place, was uh that made it even more better you that much better yeah and and in college um obviously you you went up against some tough players but is there anyone that sticks out as the toughest player you went up against um uh, i don't know about toughest player um well, Desley Simmons from Clemson. He he probably was one of the top players I I went against. Just as individually, um, he was everywhere. He he was all over the place, you know, causing havoc. And uh, yeah, he he was definitely you know one of the top players that I, I've been against and seen. Just how athletic and, and dynamic he is. Yeah, he's definitely, you know, a, a beast for sure. And that's an answer that, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would have. Uh, but, you know, just looking at, at yourself, what would you say is your biggest strength as a player? Man, just getting getting out of situations and, and making plays where um, where things, every, everything looks like it's going to be a negative play or, um, you know, I, 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 I my ability to extend plays is, is um I think one of my biggest strengths um that that's definitely helped us as the offense you know move forward and and um you know and 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 help us reach the stats and reach the numbers and reach the records that we have broken as an offense and reach the 
accolades that, you know, we have as a team. So I think, you know, extended plays and and getting out of trouble is definitely my biggest strength. Yeah, of course. And, and kind of, you know, looking at your game, you're a quarterback. Obviously, quarterbacks are always, you know, put underneath a microscope. They're, you know, pretty much the focal point of any offense. Um, with that being said, what would you say you're looking to most improve on as we go through this whole uh, draft process and into the NFL? Um, man, just in my knowledge of the game, um, I think definitely I can be, you know, you know, in the film room and, and as I am and, and I'm away on the whiteboard and just doing things like that to, to better um, advance my knowledge of the game and how I see it and how I speak it and, you know, how, you know, everything aligns together. So, um, you know, things change in the NFL from the, from the terms to the coverages to everything from college. So, um, you know, again, make sure that I'm, I'm up to speed and, and, you know, understanding of everything that's going on. When someone puts a defense, you know, on tape in front of me, when I have to explain something. So um, that's something that I've been working hard on this last, these last couple months. Yeah, and this next question is just a, a fun question we like to ask quarterbacks. But if you had to throw um, a touchdown pass to one receiver in the NFL, who would that be? Oh, um, man, oh, got to go with my dog, Alameda Day Zacchaeus. Um, man, he, he's with the Falcons right now. And not you know, he's not a, not a big time name yet, but he will be for sure. And that's you know, one of one of the guys that. You know, I played with and and one of the guys that, you know, I I, I bring my team anywhere it would be, and no matter you know if I play with them or have it. So um, you know, I couldn't think of anybody else that I would want to a touchdown pass to. Scratch that, my brother. That would be dope. I, I like yeah, that. That'd dope. <laughs> that'd be dope. That would be dope. That would be dope. That would be dope. And I got my brother on like a little half uh, halfback wheel. And uh, he racing up the sideline with a linebacker, uh, plays over the top. He catches it, and you know we celebrate together. That that definitely be that definitely be, uh, that'd definitely be dope. I, I really like that answer, and I, I you know I think that would be really cool to to see. Um, and you know Zacchaeus, I, I'm pretty sure his first ever catch in the NFL was like a 90 something yard touchdown. Yep. Yeah, and then. Back to back, scored two two weeks in a row. But yeah, that first one he he, he took off and had and was off to the races. Nothing new. <laughs> I yeah, it's it's something I saw in film, and I was surprised. You know the buzz that you know he wasn't getting, especially with you know kind of the trailblazers for the the shorter pass catcher. You know, like a, a Tariq Cohen coming in or a Tyler Lockett or you know Tyreek Hill. You know, I felt like you know, the evaluators clearly missed on him and, you know, it was definitely a, a, a big uh, boost for the Falcons. But, um, you know, going into my next question, since we are a Rams podcast, I do have to ask you, I know it's early in the draft process, uh, but have, have you met or spoken with the LA Rams yet? Mm-mm, no, I haven't been in any contact with them yet. No, but, um, sure. Uh, hopefully, you know, things, things, Things pick up. I mean, I know um, their offense and, and kind of that's the kind of offense you know I'm studying right now, as far as the terminology, um, and, and kind of doing like I'm studying different playbooks in the Rams is definitely one of them that I'm studying. So it'd be it'd be it'd be cool if um, they got in contact with me and we could uh, you know chop it up. Um, I would, I'd love to be back on the West Coast uh, to play football um, and kind of switch up from the from the cold that, you know, it was in Virginia towards the end. So. <laughs> I hear you there. Yeah, that'll, be, that'll be dope. So, so we'll, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens uh, moving forward. Yeah, for sure. And just in closing, we just kind of want to hear, you know, in your own words, who is Bryce Perkins as a player and who is he as a person? Oh, um, man, I'm, as a player, you know, I, I'm a guy that, that, plays the game for my teammates and definitely everybody on the field with me. Um, if anybody watches my tape, you know, they'll, they'll see me, you know, leaving everything out on the field, you know, every game, you know, in order 
to to get a win for the guys that I play with. Um, you know, I um there's nothing better than, you know, the guys that you've been with over the, the past year or past off season and then going on the field with them and then and then playing your heart out in order to um in order to get a win together. So uh, as a player man, I'm I'm a I'm a true competitor and and uh, I'm obsessed with with the perfection and uh, and I just strive to be great for the team that I'm with. As a person, um man, I I'm 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 a I'm a happy, you know, positive guy. Um, you know, I try uh, um not problematic. I'm I'm a pretty relaxed, you know, laid back dude that that that's easy to get along with and and you know, I I'm I'm goofy at times and I just like to have fun you know, with the guys around me and establish relationships. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. I'm a big relationship dude. Hey, well, we love to hear that. Um, you know, thanks so much for coming on, Bryce. We really appreciate it. Uh, we are fans of your game, and we were fans. Of, well, at least I was definitely a fan of uh, Paul myself. Uh, really liked him in the draft, and then I'm actually in upstate New York, so he was really big in this area. Um, you know, for a bit. So, uh, you know, really hoping that you know you can really make an impact. We're excited to uh, watch you grow throughout this process, and you know, as an NFL player, uh, you know, stay in touch, man. And, uh, we'll be rooting for you. Thank you guys, man. Thank y'all for having me for real. Yeah, of course. You have a good one. Uh, you guys too. <laughs>